How's it going, everybody? Hope you're having a great day, studying hard, and enjoying your time as a student pilot. This is part-time pilot, and I'm continuing my video series on aircraft systems, in particular the pitot-static system, and and even even more particularly how the altimeter works. We're gonna go over all three instruments of the pitot-static system, starting with this video on how the altimeter works. So how does the altimeter work? So first off, you have a static source of air. The static source comes in and it fills the altimeter chamber up with static air. Static air here, here, it fills the whole thing up. Then you have a thing called an aneroid wafer. What the heck is an aneroid wafer? Well, I like to think of it as a balloon or an accordion type thing that can expand and contract, but is completely sealed. And inside of it, is gas at sea level pressure. So it's completely sealed, that gas cannot leave, nothing can enter it, and it's at sea level pressure. So if the static air surrounding this flexible balloon accordion thing goes up, now the pressure outside of the wafer is higher than what's in the wafer because the pressure inside the wafer always stays the same, it's sea level pressure. So as static air is above sea level pressure, then the air outside is higher. And we know that higher pressure wants to go to lower pressure. So the higher pressure on the outside of the wafer will want to exert a force inward on the flexible wafer, making it contract. Now, if the static air is below sea level pressure, then the static air surrounding it is now lower than what's inside the wafer. Because again, the wafer inside the aneroid wafer the pressure does not change it's always sea level pressure so if outside of it it's lower then now the pressure inside is higher and wants to go out so it'll push out on the inside of the walls making the wafer expand we also know that in our atmosphere this is our aircraft the green is ground we take off our atmosphere has a pressure gradient and that pressure gradient is estimated that every thousand feet, this is feet, we lose about one inch of mercury of pressure per thousand feet. So as we climb, the pressure goes down. So climb up, pressure down. Okay, so as we go up, the pressure goes down. So, let's think of this in terms of our altimeter. As we climb, the static air inside surrounding our wafer goes down. So when it goes down, the pressure inside the wafer is higher. And it wants to push out, making this expand. The opposite is true when we descend, and the static air is now higher than the pressure inside here. It wants to push on the outside of the walls, making it contract. Okay, so how does this make the dials on the face of the altimeter spin? Well, the expansion and contraction of this wafers are connected to a gear system, which spins the altimeter dials. Simple as that. There's another component that you as a pilot will use every single time you fly, and that's the altimeter setting adjustment knob. ATC tells you the latest pressure update. You turn this knob until you see that new pressure update inside the altimeter setting window. So why do we do this? Well, this entire system, the wafers, the gears, the knobs, are all assuming a standard pressure, standard temperature. Sorry. So there's no way for this system to account for a non-standard temperature except for manual inputting of this altimeter setting adjustment knob. The reason this is important is because as the temperature changes, the pressure changes. So when temperature goes down, pressure goes down. When temperature goes up, pressure goes up. So let's say the temperature goes down and the pressure goes down. So the temperature is down in the air, the pressure is down in the air. This aneroid wafer is going to read with a drop in pressure, 
it's going to read that you are climbing. So your dial is going to spin, but you have not climbed or descended at all. So it is going to read that you are higher than you actually are. And if the temperature is higher, that means the pressure is higher. And that means your aneroid wafer is going to think that you are descending. And so your altimeter is going to move down and it's going to read that you are lower than you actually are. Okay, so that has been how the altimeter works. Please subscribe for the next video on how the vertical speed indicator works. And please follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot for a ton more over like 35 posts of some really cool uh, diagrams and stuff trying to make these concepts easier for you guys if you have any questions or comments please comment below please subscribe and i hope you guys all have a great day and just enjoy flying that's the reason you started doing it so if you have any questions if i can make it easier for you i just want you to enjoy it and have a good day